think it might be the same one that came to uh, Ed's and Harvey's office the yeah, other day. Yeah, the same one. Ed! Hi. Ed! Come here! Open the door! Ed! Sure enough, I opened the door and the, and the visitor was right there. Being an inclusive office, I felt like it would be wrong of me to refuse him. because they're looking either for water or for food or for mating. Ed, open the door! Don't open the door, Ed! Oh, open the door, Ed! What, what do you want to do here? Ah! Ed, what are you going to do? Ah! Hello, can I get some help in getting a university education? This is actually in. <laughs> it's come in for a counselling consultation. He came in, licked his ass off the floor. I was actually quite grateful. I hung around for a little while and made his way out. Ed, what are you going to do? I'm going to let him make his own mind up. Here he goes, alright! Alright, I've told him what he needs to know. <laughs> he knows the difference between an Ivy League and research institute. He's got his summer program. That's hilarious, oh my goodness. If we start feeding the animals things that are not part of their normal diet, you're disrupting the balance. So the general principle is don't feed anything to any of the animals. And they're used to students and teachers by now, and people, because we have a big campus, right? So they, we have some resident iguanas, so to speak. Usually in the beginning of the year, there are a lot of new students that come, they all get excited and like, oh my god, iguana! And then in the end of two years, it's like, okay, it's just another iguana. Their need for attention gets more and more extreme to the point where they just come and walk into the office just <laughs> have someone pay attention to them. Yeah. They also run so 